What's going on guys and welcome back to another episode of Club and Country. This is episode number 42 and we start today's episode with some player training before going to our first game of the episode against Auxerre here in the Coupe de Ligue or the French version of the League Cup as I would call it. Uh, taking on Auxerre here for the first game of today's episode but before that player training feature now you may be wondering why right now Corchia is getting all five slots. That's because he's a 79 overall right back and I want to get him to an 80 because I've discussed before I don't think there are that many great French right backs out of there, particularly ones that are in their sort of early to mid 20s. And Corchi, when we signed him, was 26, I do believe. And I'd say he's our best bet of being France's right back for many years to come, and a good one as well, as I'm now France manager. So for me, I want to make sure that every single player in the Paris FC side and in the France side as well at one point will be 80 plus. So Corchi as the right back, to me, it makes sense to train him to an 80 and then just leave him as he is. But uh, taking on Zaire here for the first game of today's episode in the Coupe de Ligue, or again. And the French League Cup, as I would say. Taking on Exer here. I have to say, this season we're going in search of our first ever trophy with Paris FC, or major trophy, I should say, after winning the French second tier in the first season. I can definitely see this one being a winnable competition for us. Of course, we want to win the league, that is for sure, after coming quite close last season. But still qualifying for the Champions League. We want to go one step further this year and win the league. But also, a cup would be quite nice as well. Winning our first ever cup competition would be great. And I do see this one as a winnable one. But despite that, I am still going to be playing a backup side in every single game. That's what we were doing for this game as well, playing a backup side, and the first goal was scored by the Beard Bongongui, going about his business quite leisurely right now. Seriously, only two goals this season, but both coming in this competition, but anyway, he does make it 1-0 to Paris FC, and in this game, there weren't really too many chances. It was quite a slow-paced game, nothing like a six-goal thriller in the last game, but we were playing better in my opinion, and in the 77th minute here, our captain for the night, Vincent Pires, one of the very few players that's been at Paris FC since the very beginning, scores an absolute wonder goal from range. What a strike by this guy. I did not realise he had it in his locker, but then Bellet was denied by the goalkeeper. Then the follow-up shot was headed off the line, and I was thinking to myself, it's just one of those games where FIFA doesn't want to see any more than one goal get scored by either side. But anyway, it came to Pires. I thought I'd let fly, and what a goal it was, and very little celebration from the skipper for a wonder goal there. But anyway, first goal of the season for Pires. I do believe probably his first goal of the series. I can't remember him ever scoring before, but Vincent Pires is like my David Concha. For anyone who watched my Rasting Santander save last year, first of all, thank you very much. Really appreciate it. I had a lot of fun with that one. But uh, secondly, if you watched that save, you'll know who David Concha was. Vincent Pires is this year's David Concha. But uh, either way, we won the game by two goals to nil and apparently took a shot from inside our own half, which isn't actually possible on the game. So I'm not really sure how EA worked that one out. I don't remember the shot. And again, it shows there on the radar that it came from inside our own half. You can't do that, though. You can't, you can't shoot from inside your own half because when you press the circle, button it counts as a clearance so I'm not I'm not really sure how the game worked out one out. I don't remember the shot or anything, so I don't know what happened there. But either way, we do win the game by two goals. No, that is, of course, the most important thing. We're through the next round to keep the league. And, of course, Bongongui as well got the first goal. He, like Pires, has been here since the very beginning of the series. So to see both of those original Paris FC players score the goals in that game to send us through to the quarterfinals, I was very pleased with that. And, again, I do see it as a winning competition this year. And uh, we'll have to wait and see what happens in the draw for the quarterfinal stages. But for the second game of today's episode, we are back in the league, hoping to extend our win streak here. Can't pronounce this team's name. I think it's SM Kane, but I'm not entirely sure. We take him one away from home, though, and the first chance to go for the 20th minute as well. And as you can see, Boga finds Lamar here, and it turns out that 21 minutes into this game, there is justice in this world because Lamar has scored his first ever Paris FC goal and makes it SM Kane nil, Paris FC one. And the number 11 has been so disappointing for us this season since coming in from Monaco. I've stuck uh, stuck faith with him on the right wing, but he hasn't scored a single goal. I think he's only got one assist as well. He's been so isolated out on the flank. He's done basically nothing for us all year. He's had a couple of chances but just hasn't been able to take them and finally scores his first goal with the club and does make it 1-0 to Paris FC. So absolutely delighted about that. He couldn't get his second goal here after St. Maximin's shot hit the bar and came back to him. But either way, he won't mind at all. He scored his first goal and uh, he's really pleased with that. And I was really pleased with that as well because the January transfer window is right around the corner. And I've said a couple of times now, I was thinking about possibly cashing in on Lamar whilst I can, trying to make a profit in six months, but to be honest, if he scored his first goal here maybe it's a sign of things to come, we'll certainly be hoping that is the case, but either way, it's 1-0 to Paris FC, but we made a really good save here a few minutes after the restart to keep it at 1-0 the home side weren't really doing too much in this game, but after the restart, did come out of their shells, realising they need to score a goal to get themselves back in the game, and back on level terms, and on the hour mark here, they had a great chance to score that equalising goal, as Bissat picks up the ball down the left-hand side here, and with Korchia I mean, this is probably the worst 
worst piece of jockeying you will ever see in your entire life. And I said a few times before this year, defending, I'm a little bit better than last year. On the basis of this goal, you'd think I've just been lying to you through my teeth because I don't know what on earth I was doing there, Corchi. I literally just let him cut inside. You know, seriously, the, the right back who we signed, our record signing, our most expensive player on 50 grand a week. Said before, hasn't been great for us, but most importantly, uh, most importantly, uh, most of the time it's my fault for not controlling him very well. And it certainly was there. I don't know what on earth I was trying to do. Just let him come inside and have a simple finish at the near post. Can't really blame Barmy either as the shot came in from close range. But anyway, it's 1-1 in this game. We had a couple of chances later on. First, little uh, Yannick Giron shot was well saved with the goalkeeper. And then say Max means head went over the bar and behind for a goal kick. But it was how the game would finish. Final score, SM Kane 1, Paris SC 1. And again, I'm sorry, I'm probably pronouncing that team wrong. But either way, we drew the game one goal each. We were pretty unlucky in that game, I must admit. We had more chances, more shots as well. Uh, hit the bar as well through St. Maximine too. Very, very unlucky, I felt. But at the end of the day, I've said so many times before, football is a game where you need to take your chances. And if you're not going to be clinical and composed and fighting a goal, then, you know, you're not going to win the game. It's as simple as that. And we didn't there. We should have taken the chances we had. You know, seriously, St. Maximine hitting the bar. Uh, St. Maximine's header there was a really good chance as well. Couldn't convert. But either way, a 1-1 draw is not a bad result, I suppose. It is the 19th game of the season. And as you'll see by the league table too, we are still behind PSG right now, but only by a point, I think, as we end the first half of the season. But uh, following that, some more training. Courtier is still stuck at a 79. I just need him to grow one more rating and then I'm going to leave him, but we'll have to wait and see. But uh, following that as well, you saw that one of our academy players wanted to terminate his contract, Paul Riviere. Uh, now, to be honest, this guy probably isn't going to succeed here. His overall is very, very low and his potential is 82 to 88. So his potential is quite good, but his overall is very, very low. And I've said so many times before, when you get a player out of your academy that has a really low overall, rule like that it's just it's so unlikely he's going to succeed unless you train him to the max so it's highly unlikely he'll play any games for us in all honesty there's a player right now that we have a right back you just saw a minute ago there can't pronounce his name, but he's really low overall as well. And though his potential is not terrible because his overall is so low, he's just not going to get used because in this team, even though we're not a great team right now, he's still so far behind the other players here. And I just, I hope next year EA realise that there are very few players out there that will truly develop players that are so low overall unless they really want to. But uh, regardless, he's he's coming to the team. He's coming to the squad. He's uh, 51 overall now. And you can see as well, he's got uh, three star skills, three star weak foot. He's growing straight away, which is nice to see but again he's going to require a lot more growth than just one rating if he wants to play some minutes in this Paris SC side but either way halfway through the season we're actually one point ahead of PSG sorry I said a minute ago we we're one point behind with him one, one point ahead of PSG halfway through the season which is good to see uh, the only downside is of course we lost to PSG in the first game of the season as I get an email there we lost to PSG in the first game of the season against them uh, we got one more game to come against them of course away to part of France now if we lose that game or I should say if we fail to win that game then they end up with a better head-to-head -head record than us and that could be crucial come the end of the season because I do believe this season will be settled by a couple of points and will be quite tight this year just like it was last year as well I can see quite a few teams going for it come the end of the season I don't know why I just feel like it's going to be quite a close season like last year too but uh, that is a big downside for us losing the first game against PSG we'll have to try and win uh, away from home but either way one point ahead of them halfway through the season great start so far and you know Thierry Ambrose is not firing on all cylinders right now but as a team we're doing the job right now and I'm glad to be in first place but uh, still falling out the January transfer window as you can see has now open which is fantastic everyone loves it when a January transfer window opens everyone loves it when there's transfers to be made now with Paris FC we've got around six million pounds to work with after progressing to the knockout stages of the Champions League but of course here at Paris FC that's not that much money let's be honest here it's not that much money it's 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 helpful it's the most we've had in quite a while but it's not actually that much money and I've said many times before in career mode you know anything shy of 10 million pounds goes like that like seriously just goes completely I don't think I've ever snapped my fingers on a commentary before but either way there we go <laughs> do it again for the laughs um yeah it's uh, it's it's it, the money helps but it's not going to do too much for us so because of that what we're going to do is try and buy some players on pre-contracts and as you can see right here we submit offers for four players I think it is we put in bids here uh Thomason and Mendy are the most two notable ones and we shall wait and see what the players say now these players may end up being squad players or bench players or whatever you know players that don't really do too much for us but 
they'll help us and again they'll help us accumulate money in years to come as well when we decide to sell them on and as we all know there is very little risk when we sign players for free as we're only playing their wages and don't have to pay an actual transfer fee but either way guys it's going to be today's episode of club and country so thank you very much for watching the video really hope you have enjoyed it if you haven't done today's episode of club and country then please do consider leaving likes so it's quite much appreciated and really help my channel out because you don't have to leave a like if you don't want to totally up to you gotta keep saying that and uh, i'll see you for the next episode of club and country very soon much love bye bye